Bibliophiles of the internet, my name is Adriana and today I'm here to bring you a very exciting video, my very first recommendations video. And it's especially exciting because today I get to share with you guys one of the many loves of my life, manga and anime. So today I thought I would recommend some really great starting points for if you want to get into manga slash anime. Also it's very difficult to separate manga and anime, that's why I'm doing it together, I'm not just saying manga. Because because nine times out of ten an anime either originated as a manga or was turned into a manga and vice versa. This is going to be in an if you then you format. For instance, if you like peanut butter then you might like jelly and you might like them together. And I'm going to be referring to books of course wherever I can but also like TV shows and that kind of stuff to help you guys find something that you might genuinely be interested in. And also I had so many ideas for this kind of crossover recommendation that I'm going to have to make a sequel video because there were just so many ideas going on in here. So to make both my life and your life even easier, I'm going to be breaking down today's video into four sub-genres or sub-categories. The first will be action slash fantasy, so let's get into that. So I'm just gonna get the most obvious recommendation out of the way, straight out of the and so if you enjoy The Walking Dead, either the graphic novel series or the TV show, or if you enjoy A Game of Thrones slash A Song of Ice and Fire, specifically Jon Snow's storyline, then you should try Attack on Titan. First of all, to give you a summary about Attack on Titan, this is like a post-apocalyptic action survival story that revolves around what remains of humanity defending itself against these huge, giant, humanoid monsters known as titans. So what's left of humanity is hiding within these walls. And the story revolves around the main character and his friends who join the army in order to ward off these titans and give humanity some kind of hope. First of all, The Walking Dead and Attack on Titan have a lot of elements in common. The zombies in The Walking Dead are very similar to the titans in Attack on Titan. Because they have little to no intelligence, their goal is to eat or harm humanity in some way, shape, or form. And also the themes that these series deal with are very, very similar. There is the classic debate of what it means to live versus versus what it means to survive. And also throughout both series there is a lot of moral debate and of course a ton of action. So for Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire I specifically noted Jon Snow's story because it is extremely similar to Attack on Titan. If you read or watch that series I'm sure you are very familiar with the fact that Jon Snow is part of the Night's Watch. And the Night's Watch is almost exactly the same concept as the Scouting Legion in Attack on Titan, which is where a lot of the story takes place because the main character and his friends are in the Scouting Legion. Just the same way that it is the job of Jon Snow and his companions in the Night Watch to defend the wall from the White Walkers, the Scouting Legion in Attack on Titan has to defend the walls from the Titans. It's a very similar concept. And the next manga slash anime series that I'm going to be recommending is another action, fantasy, science fiction kind of story. Therefore, if you like Ready Player One by Ernest Klein, you should definitely consider trying Sword Art Online. So it's about this MMORPG called Sword Art Online. Basically, that means it's a massive multiplayer kind of game, and the players are actually assuming the roles of the characters that they're playing as. So obviously there's a lot of buzz about this game and the first day that it launches millions of players log in to Sword Art Online. What they come to realize very soon afterwards is that there is no log out function and the creator actually informs them that if they die in the game they die in real life and the only way that they're going to escape is to defeat the game entirely, which he has made certain is exceedingly hard to do. Ready Player One revolves around a highly advanced, very immersive, 
video game universe and so does Sword Art Online. And the main characters of both of these stories quickly realize that whatever happens in the game has a direct and severe consequence on their real lives. Finally, we come to my last manga slash anime recommendation in the fantasy genre, and that is if you like Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, then you should read or watch Pandora Hearts. Something that I did not know when I first picked up Pandora Hearts is that it is actually sort of a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, but very loosely so. Pandora Hearts is a story that revolves around a main character named Oz Vesadius. Oz is sent into the depths of the abyss. The abyss is basically this dark, creepy other dimension and it's meant for prisoners and that's where they're sent for retribution for their sins. The only thing that Oz is told before he is thrown into the abyss is that his sin is his very existence. And when he is in the abyss, he meets a girl named Alice. Alice, as it turns out, is in fact a chain, just sort of like a demon. And the only way for Oz to escape the abyss is if he makes a deal with Alice, this chain. I would definitely say it's more loosely inspired by Alice in Wonderland. Like for instance, the abyss in Pandora Hearts is this story's version of Wonderland. And like I said, some of the characters are inspired by the characters in Alice in Wonderland. Obviously there is a character named Alice. There's also a character who is referred to as the Cheshire Cat, things like that. If you really love Alice's adventures in Wonderland, then you should very seriously be considering giving Pandora Hearts a shot. My next manga recommendation is going to be historical fiction. If you like anything written by Jane Austen or if you like stories like I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, then you should seriously consider reading Emma. This is a series I have not started yet, but I've heard really, really great things about it. From what I understand, it's about a girl, obviously, who is named Emma. She comes from a less than noble background, a kind of impoverished background, and she is raised to become a proper maid. And I believe she ends up falling in love with the eldest son of this very, very wealthy family. And of course, circumstance forces them to keep their love a secret. If you're familiar with anything that Jane Austen writes, she usually writes some kind of romance and she also talks a lot about the differences between classes. And I Capture the Castle is also a historical kind of coming of age novel about some main characters who are from a very poor background as well. And that story also has some romance in it. So again, if you like these kinds of stories over here, you should be looking in to Emma. The next two manga slash anime series that I'm going to be recommending to you belong to one of my favorite subgenres, sports mangas. If you enjoy One Tree Hill, specifically the earlier seasons, then you should be watching or reading Kuroko no Basuke. This story revolves around the ultimate basketball team, an undefeatable basketball team who were so good at what they did that they became known as the generation of miracles. But what most people didn't know is that there was another member of the generation of miracles who most people never noticed, who came to be known as the Phantom Sixth player. And that Phantom Sixth player is the title character in this series, Kuroko. So when the Generation of Miracles goes to high school, they split up, they all go to different schools and different teams, and then obviously there is a rivalry that's going down. And this series closely follows Kuroko specifically as he goes to this new high school and joins the basketball team and their journey as they try and take on the Generation of Miracles. Obviously, if you've watched One Tree Hill, specifically, as I already stated, the earlier seasons, this is also a show that is pretty heavy on the basketball side. Also, basketball is just a theme that runs throughout the entirety of One Tree Hill, even to the last season. And both of these stories talk about, of course, the value of the game, the intensity of the game. And of course, they both deal with individual success versus the success of the team. The next series that I'm going to be recommending to you is a personal favorite. It is only an anime, not a manga. I could not come up with a fair comparison, with a fair equivalent 
to this series. And that is free, Iwatobi Swim Club. This story revolves around four childhood friends who used to belong to the same swim club. As children, they became very close, but suddenly one of the members in this team decides that he is going to move to Australia because he wants to become an Olympic swimmer and he ain't playing. So the team is split up, but then three of the members meet again in high school. And they decide against all odds to start a swim team in their high school. And not long after they recruit a couple more members, they realize that Rin, the fourth member who moved to Australia, has come back to Japan. And they realize that the friendship that they once had is very different, very tense, and now it has ignited a rivalry. It's laugh out loud funny. The characters and all their friendships and relationships are absolutely hilarious. It's emotional and it's heartwarming because a lot of the story is rooted in their childhood and also in their friendship. You get to see a lot of swimming montages, which swimming is one of my favorite sports. And it's just a feel good show. Free is one of my favorite shows ever. It's one of my favorite stories ever. And I cannot recommend it enough. And here we are going to close the first part of my manga recommendations with some contemporary manga. The first recommendation I have in this subgenre is one of my favorite manga slash films that I've ever experienced in my entire life and it is so so beautiful. After a little bit of consideration the very best that I could come up with is if you enjoyed Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell then you should try 5 centimeters per second by Makoto Shinkai. Five centimeters per second is about two main characters, a boy and a girl, whose names are escaping me right now. I'm sorry. They grow up with one another and their friendship is very strong as they're young. And what eventually happens is that she moves away. They eventually do lose touch with one another. And the story follows them, more specifically the boy, as he lives out the rest of his life trying to get over this childhood friendship, this first love. That being said, I will say that the tone of Eleanor and Park is very different from five centimeters per second. But I think both of these stories are bittersweet. They both showcase a first love, but that first love is also tinged with pain at the same time. And I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I think both of these stories have beautiful endings that will emotionally cripple you for years to come. But I think they're perfect endings. And now for my final contemporary recommendation and the last recommendation for this video. This one I had quite a lot of comparisons because I could not find the perfect story that really fit my next recommendation. So I'm kind of picking out certain elements of other stories, so you're just gonna have to roll with it for a second. So I have three points of reference for this one. If you like Looking for Alaska by John Green, Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, or Just One Day by Gail Foreman, then you might be interested in reading Solanine. Solanine is a contemporary manga about a young girl who has just recently graduated from college, I believe. She's living with her boyfriend and she has this sort of dead-end job that's just paying the bills. She becomes really involved with her boyfriend and this band that he has formulated and she's really focused on helping them become famous. And so the story is really focused on making a living versus making yourself happy. And it also talks a lot about is there ever a right time, if any, to really pursue your dreams. So where Looking for Alaska is concerned, this is also a coming of age novel and the characters in this story have to learn how to overcome some difficult happenstances. And Fangirl and Just One Day also kind of work together on this one and I'm pulling very specific elements from those ones as well. And I chose these because they are YA novels but they're focused on a slightly older protagonist. And both Kath and Fangirl and Ellison from Just One Day are also facing these sort of educational dilemmas, I guess you could call them. So if you liked any of the elements that I mentioned from these stories, you should definitely consider giving this one a try. So if you didn't see anything in this video that piqued your interest and you're more looking for stories that are revolved around subgenres like 
thriller, suspense, science fiction, paranormal, and action, be sure to stay tuned for part two of my manga recommendations. So definitely let me know in the comments down below if any of the manga or anime that I said interests you or that you're going to look into it. I would really love to know if this video was in any way helpful to you. So that's it for me and today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I will catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye!